How could I have forgotten the cowbell? Welcome to Bloy Oyster Cults, Don't Fear the Reaper, most excellent and classic rock riff of all time to start off my classic riff series. So uh, let's get to a close up and check out how to play that riff. Okay, the first chord we've got here is an A chord. It's only a partial A chord, we don't need the whole thing. We're using our second finger here on the fourth string, second fret and the third finger directly underneath it on the second fret of the third string. We're going to start off by playing the open fifth string, then the fourth string, then the third string, and then we lift our fingers off and play the open G string, just the open G string on that last note. But we lift all of our fingers up to help us get to our new chord, which is G chord, Again, we don't have to play like a whole G chord like some of you might have learned like this or whatever. We're just using the second finger there on the second fret of the fifth string and the third finger on the third fret of the thicker string, the sixth string. So we got... And we got that little gap there to change and we're going to play just sixth string, five, four, three. Then we do like a little F power chord here, so first finger in the first fret of the thicker string and the third finger in the third fret of the fifth string and we again play sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, third string. Now I know the, the fourth string kind of sounds a little bit funny out of context but it sounds cool in the riff. Um, after that we just go back to the G and that's the whole riff. chords that we're playing in this are really A minor, G, F and G and they'd be the chords that you'd play if you wanted to kind of do a strummy version. It's about 20 billion songs with that chord sequence but there's one other little bit in the, in the song so it's, it's doing the riffs a lot then it goes into F, G, A minor, F, E minor, A minor, don't feel the So it's just that little bit that goes F, G, A minor, two, three, four, F, E minor, and then back into the A minor, to G, to F, da. It's kind of strums it a couple of times, and then eventually it kind of morphs into the riff. The picking for this tune is alternate picking. I was not really sure to be honest, I tried a whole heap of different pickings and ended up having to look at YouTube and checking out some live videos of the Blue Oyster Cult playing the tune and it's quite obvious when you watch some films that he's using alternate picking. So make sure that you're going down, up, 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 down, up. There's a few other patterns that kind of seem a little bit easier at first, but if you do it this way, it does sound just like the record, and if you're going to accidentally hit any strings, at least they'll be accidentally the right strings, you know? So, um, like the same strings that he might accidentally have hit on the record. Um, when it comes to doing the chord part, you can either kind of strum, so you had to be kind of moving the same as it was for the riff. Um, live, very often it's kind of chugging eight, so it changes to double time playing power chords off an F, E minor, A minor, don't G to the F, don't, don't, and eventually it kind of moves back into the riff there. So um, and that's pretty much the whole tune, well uh, the, the whole of the kind of the, the radio edit of the tune because the actual tune is really long, got loads of great interesting parts and really good solos if you fancy transcribing them yourself, but this is just a riff lesson and uh, I wasn't even really supposed to do the chord bit, but anyway. Um, hope you've enjoyed playing that and uh, don't forget, more cowbell.
See you soon. Bye-bye.